Wonderful. Welcome, everybody. We have with us a special guest. Here we are doing a feature three-part series on water and making sure you have the very best quality of water. And in this installment, we're going to be hearing from Michael Lund, who is the founder of AliveWater.com. We're going to be talking about revitalizing your water, taking it to that next level. If you've ever heard about uh, vortexing water, the natural state of water and how it revitalizes itself, purifies itself. It is through the action of vortexing it. So welcome, Michael, to the show to be chatting with us about the Vortex Water Revitalizers. Thank you, Malcolm. My pleasure. Right on. So up on the screen, we've got a picture of you holding one massive, giant <laughs> Vortex <laughs> Revitalizer pipe there. That's incredible. Yeah. Actually, yeah. uh, uh, the pipe that I'm holding in my hand is a four-inch diameter copper pipe with that spiral inside. You can see a blow-up of the inside of the pipe when you uh, look to the left there. And um, what inspired me to uh, make that uh, super in, in, in position, I guess you could say, or superimposing it, was that, or is, that I really you know, it's a pretty big one eight feet long and four inch in diameter. But I would like to make them with an in, uh, with an, uh, di a diameter of about 10 feet or so, which is the actual pipe size that is providing water for Vancouver. I haven't convinced them yet, but uh, I've been standing inside uh, such a pipe and I just had this massive desire to uh, make these huge, gigantic sizes so uh, so we can revise like, the water in entire cities. But it's coming, I'm sure. It's just yeah. a matter of time. Cool, right on. So Michael does, he does, joins us from uh, Vancouver where he is based and where he ships these products literally all around the world. And uh, though we are starting with showcasing this massive commercial size, like he said, that could be used for a mun municipal system, uh, what you'll see and what you're going to learn about is all the different home models that you can put on your uh, taps, as well as onto shower heads. Uh, your kitchen faucets, everything. And there's kind of an inner view of a, of a much smaller kind of home version. So what we're going to cover today is, you know, what is vortexing the water? What does it do? What are the benefits? And this conversation comes out of uh, the, the inspiration that I've got. I'd always heard about vortexing water and I've had little kind of gizmos and contraptions for a while. But uh, very recently, we put one of these pipes, uh, this one here exactly, uh, you can see the copper that's kind of in a, in a squiggly shape there that is spiraled all the way through. So we put that on our system here at Light Cellar. So all the water is not only filtered, but it's then revitalized as it goes through this vortexing action. So Michael, why don't you take it away and let us know, um, you know, why are we even doing this? What is the benefit to uh, vortex water? Well, uh, first of all, the way that we are treating water in our distribution pipe system is that we are constraining the water into uh, uh, all these uh, straight pipes, 90 degree turns, and uh, it's uh, creating friction in uh, the water uh, uh, as it passes through these uh, uh, pipes and kind of concentric movements instead of swirling. It's kind of like a straight jacket being put on the water. So to make up for that, oh yeah, and that the friction uh, kind of depletes the water of life force, vitality in other words. So, and also I believe it's uh, messing up the structure of water. So kind of like uh, um, <laughs> putting it out of shape, you could say. So what the vortex does, if you look at that, uh, internal four inch pipe there. And then imagine that the water is going mainly forming two streams of water on either side of that spiral. And uh, if we uh, scroll up to that picture of the, of the uh, smaller one, then you can see uh, uh, each, uh, each uh, section of the spiral 
is illustrating kind of like a, a curved, uh, a cycloid curved spiraling motion space for the water in a double helix DNA type spiral design. So the water itself, if you imagine it, imagine it uh, running its course through the pipe in a split second, in all these curves, it, it falls in upon itself in a movement, much like a wave crashing against the shore. And uh, that creates a massive amount of small vortices in the water. And that causes implosion which can be experienced as a cooling, life-forming energetic process, which is why when you feed it to your plants, all of a sudden you've got more, more uh, buds, more new uh, shoots and uh, brighter color, colored flowers. And uh, it's literally uh, can happen overnight. I'm not giving any guarantees here, but this is what I hear. I heard from a guy a customer who was probably a little bit uh, either unmotivated or, or just half, no, I don't know. Anyway, he, uh, he told me that um, he would give his plants uh, the uh, living water from the shower. And every time he did it, they gave new shoots. He didn't do it often, but every time he did it, they got new shoots as opposed to when he just gave it his uh, tap water. So definitely it's a, it's a revitalizing the water. And the way you can experience that when you drink it is that it's instantly absorbed by your body. And that is because that it has been restructured into a more micro, mic, micro clustered state. So to illustrate that increased absorption in the body, I can refer to something a little less romantic it's a factory in, uh, in, uh, on the outskirts of Paris in France, where they're paying for the hot water coming into the factory, which is a metal part uh, factory. They make the metal parts and paint them, yeah? So they have to clean them really well before they paint them. So they have a, they have a, a water softener, salt-based, and then they have a reverse osmosis system and uh, since they also pay for the water going down the drain, like wastewater, they uh, were interested in saving water. So after they installed the Vortex water revitalizer, they measured that 28% more water was going to the RO membrane. Now, you can translate that into that uh, when you absorb the water instantly when you drink revitalized water or living water or living vortex water, like I say, then it's instantly going through the cell membranes and absorbed throughout your body. And it will go to, uh, it will go on to hydrate your entire body. But first it will hydrate the body where you most need it. Most likely your head and your lungs and your vocal cord. Right. Yeah, I love uh, how you've given those examples and, you know, kind of what I've gotten from this so far, you know, how you started off with saying was how our water is now and especially how we transport it, right? So it can be full of chemicals and it's transported through, you know, long straight pipes, you know, right angle turns. And that just is what it is. That's kind of the, our modern infrastructure that we're dealing with, but that's not so good for water. So we're getting kind of dead, denatured water. And what these pipes do is, is they mimic uh, how water moves in nature and revitalizes itself. And if anyone's ever experienced, you know, fresh spring water uh, or other natural waters, you know, from nature, it's, it's in this state. So we're trying to recreate that. And like you said, um, you know, plants are certainly very receptive. Uh, I'm sure animals as well that are a little bit more in touch. Uh, have, do you have any kind of examples or case studies with animals and their response to the, the, the vortex water? Yeah, uh, I remember uh, one experience I had myself 
was I was visiting a, a customer here in uh, North Vancouver who uh, lives close to a creek in the forest. And she had an old uh, aggressive, super aggressive old uh, German shepherd. And uh, when I came to install a shower of life for her. And uh, then uh, she, had, uh, she had this uh, remote controlled electrocution uh, device on the dark. So right. if he started uh, wanting to do something aggressive, she should, he could get an electrical shock. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, the dog was lying next to her as far away as possible from me and was looking at me very uh, suspicious, you know. And then, uh, and then I, I, I noticed I made a comment to her about he had a, a huge load of uh, food that he didn't touch. And, uh, and she said, oh, uh, he's going to eat that around 9 o'clock or so. It's probably too hot. Uh, we're talking about uh, it was 6.15 or so I was there. And then we are talking, talking, talking. And uh, the dog is you know, for like considerable time uh, uh, watching me in suspicion, yeah, ready to attack me. <laughs> then uh, I finally uh, go up and uh, install the sharp life. Now it's like uh, 6.45 or so. And then I ask uh, her to uh, uh, give me his bowl of uh, empty bowl of water. And uh, he, so I could fill it up yeah, with the uh, living water. And uh, she told me that the dog uh, never drank the water inside the home. He would always drink it outside from the creek or when it was raining from rain puddles. So, I said, well, let's see how he likes this. So I filled up this uh, two liter uh, tray of water. And then I went out in the kitchen and sat it down. And then uh, I walked back to my chair, not even calling the dog. I just said, there you go. In a, in a kind of brusque voice. And then uh, the dog waited a little bit. And then he got up. I think he could smell water. And then he went out in the kitchen and all we could hear from him was blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and he, he gobbled up about two liters of water. And uh, while he was doing that, we were sitting there talking. And then he came in to the living room and lo and behold, he came as far as possible away from her and laid himself next to me. And he looked at me with really, really kindness in his eyes. And then that was of course fantastic, you know, what, a, what, a, what an honor to serve this dog with some good water, good living water. Anyway, now we're talking about uh, seven o'clock, 7.15 max. And then uh, after having lied there or laid uh, by my feet for like five minutes, then he got up and walked over to his food tray and ate all of the food and then I, I concluded that since, you know, we're talking instant absorption of water, all his digestive juices started producing and now he was ready to get his meal, huge meal. That's my little story. And then yeah. I have customers who are, you know, uh, cats and dogs who refuse to drink water, even filtered water in the case of a cat. And uh, that cat was uh, hilarious. When I first came to install this uh, filter model, and you can show that on, on, a, on a, well, you don't have to show it actually. So let's uh, go with the story. When I came to install this in this fancy uh, high rise, two, uh, uh, two stories high apartment in downtown Vancouver, this uh, guy who was an importer of uh, of uh, uh, multivitamins, et cetera. He had installed uh, this uh, filter under the counter filter for his cat. And sorry about that. Um, so anyhow, this, um, this cat was very uh, wild, really cute, but very wild. Yeah? 
and very territorial, you know, it was racing around and kind of aggressive towards me. And then I installed this uh, device and then I went home and then uh, I think uh, a little year later or so, I came to sing about him and then I phoned him up and asked him uh, how he and his cat was doing. I said, great, the cat has been drinking the water all this time and I'm really happy about it. And I said, well, can I come down and, uh, and uh, get that on video? And then I went down there and when I got into the apartment or the condo, uh, he was sitting on a kind of a bar stool, high stool, yeah? and uh, the cat was gentle, not running around like crazy, and he was uh, you know, greasing me you know, in a cat-like way, of course. And then I'm sitting down, I sit myself down on my knee, and then I have the camera in my right hand and uh, supporting on my knee. And then uh, the other hand I have on the uh, knee on the floor, kind of with my palm up, yeah? Not being aware of, only being aware of filming him, yeah? I said, how do you like, how do you like the water? <laughs> and then uh, the cat uh, was laying his head in my hand while he was standing up, yeah? Or he was bending down and putting his head in my hand. And I thought that was hilarious. And when I asked him, how do you like the water? The cat jumped up in front of the camera. <laughs> it's kind of fussy, it's shaken and so on. I'm not using it. But I got the footage uh, somewhere and I'll just never forget it. Yeah. That's my own two personal stories about cats. Then I've had cats myself and they of course always drank my water, even out of my own glasses. If I didn't, if they didn't have enough water themselves, they went for my glass. Yeah, cool. Well, animals definitely know, hey, they've, they've got a, a, a great sense for, for what is good and, and will yeah. we'll have their preferences, don't they? So I got a, I got a story, I got a story Malcolm, uh, from some non-animals, that's earthworms. There was a, a province down in North California and uh, they were trying to uh, create a garden out of this mess they had. And, uh, and I asked the guy to dig around the garden and to estimate how many earthworms there were. And in some areas there were no earthworms whatsoever. And in other areas there was just a few. And however, that uh, changed dramatically over the years, even the first year, because the earthworms got attracted to the area where they were drip irrigating them. And they had, it's a, a wonderful story about the development of this uh, property. And if you can just go to my homepage, I can show you where it, where it is. So uh, they actually, uh, if you go up under view a sample news data of subtle news, click on, uh, see where it says, no, up, 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 up. And then top left, yeah, no, that's right there. That's a sample news data. And then yeah. you can uh, scroll down uh, the first part is all about how it works. The gardening section there, uh, then uh, if you scroll down a little more, she sent me a, a testimonial uh, first after one year, I believe, and then a second one after six years. And uh, she's describing what happened to her property. And anybody interested in gardening or even in agriculture, they should take a look at this, all the details that she is uh, sharing with me and with you in those two testimonials six years apart are yeah. fascinating, very, very interesting. It includes uh, soil transformation from being like red clay, like soil, very dry of course, into like brown, moisty, the fertilized uh, soil over a period of five, six years. So. Cool, that's amazing. So we, we talked a little bit about how it uh, revitalizes it, that double helix spiral imploding in on itself, energizing it. One thing that uh, you had shared with me was that, and you know, kind of just looking through your website, reading, reading the liter literature, you know, so from that perspective of, of it kind of creating more micro clusters, I get that idea of that becoming more hydrating. How about this idea that 
you know, it, it purifies the water at the same time. So if, uh, cause you, you, you had said that, you know, you can add these things on with or without a filter and then it'll actually help reduce the chlorine. Is that, that's true? Yeah, it will, it will uh, kind of, uh, the way I see it is that uh, the vortex action, the reconstruction, the reconstruction of the molecular structure uh, kind of uh, kicks out the chlorine rips it apart maybe, kicks it out. So when you open up your faucet and then you fill up a glass, if you're quick and put you quickly put your nose down, you can smell the chlorine and then you can kind of uh, just give the water a movement. You know, so air is removing that heavy uh, uh, odor of uh, chlorine. It's like a heavy gas lying on the surface of the water after it has been kicked out. Then if you blow on it or just move the glass a little bit and then smell again, there's no smell or very little smell. Uh, however, uh, if you are having the bad luck of living in a place where they are adding chloramine, which is a solid matter, uh, unfortunately, uh, the vortex will eventually take it out. I said I made a a system where I was recycling the water through the little uh, one quarter inch river of life for filters. It took 17 minutes of recycling 11 liters of water before it was uh, dissolved and kicked out. So that's not feasible, of course. So people uh, would have to get a filter, either a pitcher or a, a filter that can uh, take out chloramine and chlorine and heavy metals of all kinds. Yeah, okay. So how about you talk a little bit about this idea of it, it eliminating uh, bacteria as well as reducing kind of mineral deposits? Yeah, uh, that's a little bit of a hit and miss, I will have to admit. Uh, we have uh, many customers who have had fantastic results with hard water elimination of uh, mineral buildup, including uh, clogged up valves in a, in a 14 year old dishwasher that after just a few runs would uh, run like new because all the uh, mineral buildup in the nozzles were, were, or nozzles were eliminated by the Vortex water. So, but no, there's all kinds of things in uh, the, makes up uh, what kind of minerals, what composition. Uh, and uh, sometimes for some reason, it doesn't work, unfortunately. It's where I hear from people uh, who are, are not finding that it, it uh, solves a problem, but it does happen. I'd like to give a 100% uh, guarantee that it does, but I cannot. But in most cases it can. And uh, I myself, I grew up with hot water and uh, uh, we actually didn't do anything about it back then in Denmark. So except that, you know, the mineral build up in the kettle, my mom would uh, eliminate using uh, vinegar, the good old fashioned way. Cool. All right, well, I'm just uh, on the page now where you have the curly in photography which is shows kind of the, the energetic quality, the electricity of a certain substance. You can take pictures of basically anything with curly photography. So this well, is before and after the water has been uh, vortexed. And wow, look, you've even got uh, a urine sample there as well. That's right, yeah. <laughs> and it's just a single drop of water on the uh, uh, two uh, photos on top. Yeah. And, uh, I'm assuming that he uh, took, I told him uh, not to drink the water and, uh, and to just take a sample of his urine and then uh, install the vortex and then start drinking the vortex water and then take a sample of them. So that's what we see below in those two photos. But as you can see there in, uh, you no, know, you can call it electromagnetic forces, you can call it life force, but it's definitely energy. Yeah? Yeah, awesome. Okay, what else would you like to share about um, the, the the vortexer? 
Well, I think uh, every home, if I may quote my customers who repeatedly say, every home should have this in their home. That will also have a major impact upon the, uh, the environment and how the, um, how the uh, uh, sewage and wastewater treatment plants uh, would be working. If you uh, go to the very top, up to the menu bar and then click on benefits, and then click on environment, and then scroll down. So a little more down. This uh, from a customer who uh, took a sample of his wastewater from the septic sewage system. Uh, that's the one to the left. And you can see the stuff floating on the top and there's mm -hmm. stuff uh, at the bottom, yeah. And then after three months, he took another sample. And of course it was stinkier, where the next sample there hardly smells and definitely not stinking. And uh, there's nothing on the bottom. There's nothing on the top. And uh, that uh, shows that the water has to a, de a great uh, degree freed itself from all the physical debris that you see on the left side here. Yeah? And uh, that goes together with a story from a trailer park down in Washington state, where I think there were 250 homes and uh, my customer in one of those homes and then the, uh, what he called the sewage inspector came and then they, they hauled away for a price uh, people's uh, septic waste. And uh, when they came to his septic tank, there was nothing to haul away. It's kind of mysterious, but I believe that it's because it was got compacted. Like it got, I don't know exactly, but more efficient, definitely. And he saved a ton of money. Yeah, that's incredible. Okay. Yeah, so it sounds like definitely lots of uh, benefits, lots of applications and yeah, there's uh, many different types of products that one can get. So you can do the whole house system, uh, which, which I put on my house. And we've also got here on, on Light Cellar. So you can get it in copper or stainless steel. Uh, copper is a little bit more expensive, but uh, I think a more natural material for, for water. You can get the shower head like we're looking at here and also one just straight on a tap. So if somebody's in a condo, for instance, you know, that, that might be a better option to go for those two. And just, uh, just Malcolm, just uh, to interrupt you, uh, if you go down to the kitchen model, uh, many, yeah. people, many people are asking me if uh, it's just the bend in the tubing that does it or if there's something inside. And just to make crystal clear to you all, of course, there is a spiral inside all of the models in various designs. And without that spiral, it wouldn't work at all. So to put an end to that uh, question, there is a spiral inside all models. Yeah, okay, cool. Awesome. So those are getting shipped out from you out in Vancouver. So if anybody wants to learn more, obviously you can see alivewater.com has a lot of uh, references to learn more. And then of course you can also contact Michael. So up on the screen here, we got Michael at alivewater.com. He's the president CEO and he got his phone number as well. Uh, there's a toll free and yeah. Reach, reach out to Michael if you got any more questions regarding this. And uh, yeah, if you got any final parting words, we'll, we'll leave it there and, and thank you for joining us today. You're welcome. So just one, one more thing. My wonderful production uh, place, they were asking, he was asking me, so what can I do for you today? He said, and I said, well, you can build me 250,000 sewage and wastewater treatment plants. And when you're done with that, you can build me 250,000 water treatment plants. And then he said, sure, no problem, we'll get there. <laughs> anyway, what I'm saying here is that, you know, it's a pioneering product. It's not easy to understand maybe, but uh, it really, really works 
even if you don't understand it, of course. And um, the plan is, of course, to re plumb planet Earth. That means to change you know, everything on planet Earth so we get a better environment and better people. Yeah, for sure. Well, thanks for doing the work that you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Helping towards that end. I love it. All right. Okay, well, thanks a lot, Michael, for joining us. Thanks for everyone that uh, is tuning in. And we'll, we will uh, leave them to reach out to you to, uh, to learn some more. So thank you, Michael. Thank you. Bye-bye, Malcolm. Have a good one.